All right, there we go. He had to take them balls out the ears. <laughs> Not gonna lay it this way. I don't, I don't like your attitude. No, I um, I'm just tired of being in here, and I haven't really been on a lease since February. Like, I guess with all his properties, his assistant just did not realize I'm not on a lease. So I just been like, either like the past four months I've been looking for a house to buy. Mm -hmm. But but they're like going like you see it one day and then the next way is under contract. Like they've been going like crazy during this quarantine. So I'm just like, okay, fuck it. So hopefully I find something. If I don't, I got a plan for that too. All right, at least you got a plan. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we talking about emotions. We finna get emotional. Um, we don't have to get emotional. We talking about. I'm gonna light a candle. How you process them emotions? Um. Ooh. You know, this is the episode four. I figured, um, out of my men, I should hit up Sean because he should give me some. How you say my name? Sean. How you said it? <laughs> um so I, I was like you know let me get some male feedback because i don't want a woman agreeing with me and not giving me like the honesty um okay. sean and i met through work and sean has grown to know that i am not of the usual and he accepts that correct <laughs> this correct. is correct okay so what I wanted to talk about is um, how do you process emotions and how do you um, figure out if you want to stay around certain people by how they process emotions? That's what okay. I'm okay. Um, so personally, when it comes to the way I process emotions, um, so I, I do it internalize a lot. Mm-hmm. I grew up kind of like that, you know, as a guy black guy specifically you don't want to let your feelings out too often Um, you got to show that you're strong but um as i became an adult for me it became more about i would say a benefit analysis like what's in it for me to let these feelings be known to somebody around me Mm. if there's no benefit then i need to keep that internalized if there's a benefit from letting somebody else know how a certain situation or interaction is affecting me then i will let them know if it's something positive that can be gained from me letting that emotion out Mm -hmm. if not i'm gonna keep it to myself um i look at that as a a sort of emotional intelligence so it's a quick benefit analysis is it worth it for me to let people know how i feel if not i'm gonna internalize it and find a, a best strategy to work around how i feel okay i think majority of males are like that now, do you find yourself on um, full with your um, keeping things to yourself? It, so with the benefit analysis, um, so if I'm in a relationship or a relation, um, it's more about how she has shown to accept how I feel about an issue, right? Mm-hmm. So it, and that's part of the benefit. It's like, okay, she seems to be accepting of how I feel about a certain thing and looks to make adjustments if adjustments are needed. But if she gives the kind of energy where it may be something she may hold against me, if I feel a certain way about something minor and I tell you and you come at me kind of like, really, something like that, that's you soft, you know, it's kind of <laughs> like that. You start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't let this be known because she may use this against me in the future. Yeah. So that's that's what I mean when I say a benefits analysis. It's like, what is it worth me letting somebody know? What do I stand to gain by letting this emotional release happen? If there's nothing to gain, then I'm not going to just lose whatever power I may have in the situation because there's power in people not knowing how you feel about certain issues. And I'm not the type just to lose my power because I can't hold an emotional release. Okay. Have you ever found where you assumed a person wouldn't be able to benefit you showing an emotion and then you didn't and then you later felt like you should have? Um, I can't 
initially think of an example, but I would definitely assume, assuming, <laughs> I would assume that it has <laughs> happened, right? Um, yeah. Because we're talking about an assumption. So a lot of times I'm trying to decide based on whatever evidence I have, mm -hmm. how is she going to respond? And when you do that, it's a, many times you're going to be wrong because you really don't know how somebody's going to respond until you put them in a situation to show right. you. Um, so I would assume off the top of my head, I can't think of an example, but I'm pretty sure that's happened. Because I honestly, though, I, I tend to keep most things in if I feel they're really personal. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable talking about general concepts that are happening. But if it's something that's like private, I'm, I'm less likely to talk about it because because um, I'm talking about the benefit to it, but it really goes a little deeper into it's like a power dynamic for me. Yeah. When somebody okay. doesn't know what gets to you, it's like a power thing. Like I, I get to maintain it when you don't know what it takes to get under my skin or what moves me on that emotional needle. Okay. Have you experienced allowing someone to know what gets under your skin and they use it against you? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> because I feel like a lot of women today do that. Yeah. And, th and then what that does is it snowballs for the next relationship for that man to be like, oh, I ain't telling this bitch shit. <laughs> that could be a part of it. Let me think, like, because honestly, a lot of what I'm saying, I've been like this since probably college. So I'm well trained. Actually, I was I was like an independent child, honestly. So mm -hmm. I've been trained since I was a child to kind of like keep things to myself. So the, the, t the times that come up the most is when we're having those dreadful conversations about our emotions. And <laughs> Not then dreadful. To the, they're <laughs> dreadful. When, when you know, hey, we need to talk about something or she, she wants to talk, you know this yeah. is about to be an emotional conversation. And honestly, me, it's hard for me to just get that emo them emotions up just because you want to have a conversation about something mm -hmm. emotional. So then I'm forced to think about it. And then once I finally come up with a response, now you want to question that response. And because I'm in these conversations where I'm forced to give you an opinion, mm -hmm. now you think I'm really emotional about the situation. So I think when I'm in those conversations where we're talking about emotions and I try to speak about a, an emotion, I regret it many times because now moving forward, we're always talking about that emotion I felt during that conversation or or if there's some other scenario that's probably close to that previous conversation, are you feeling that same emotion again? Yeah. And I'm a logical guy. I hate to say that because people always talk about it. But you are but logical. Yeah. You always take the information in and then you'll, it's like you're a solution based and then you'll go ahead and share what your thoughts are and just leave it up to the person to decide. Yeah. Well, That's what you I know, in, in those in like in like a debate, like if me and you are having a, a debate, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be right. A lot of people um they think I'm lying when I say that, but that's mm -hmm. that's truthful for me because if me and you are talking about something and I'm proven right, I didn't gain anything from that because I already knew it. Yeah. But if I'm wrong, that means I just receive some knowledge because I'm a knowledge based or as you said, a solution based person. If you give me something that's logical and I can see the logic, I just became better for it. If I'm trying to go off of my emotions and my emotions may be flawed because they're emotions, <laughs> I didn't I didn't help myself in that scenario. I just got all energetic blood pressure up for no reason. I might have missed something that could have been good for me because I was being emotional and not logical and thinking through a situation. So I don't let my emotions always dig take my action so mm. because the top three emotions that people usually stem everything from is either their anger their fear or their sadness but those are the same emotions that people cover up with happiness or I'm good or um <laughs> just like this nonchalantness and just suppressing shit. And I feel like people who walk around suppressing shit that they really feel or they really want to say, they kind of do themselves a disservice in the long run. Mm. Like Wait, it's run those back. So, so, you, so you have anger, you have fear, and you have sadness. 
A lot of people feel like if they cover up those things or they keep those things hidden by could be social media, could be a happy face, could be going out and having that quote unquote great time, um, could be the illusion of I'm straight, ain't nothing bothering me, um, look at me, look at my life, ain't nothing bothering me, but they're suppressing what they really think and what they really feel. That shit kind of like balls up or bubbles up and it oozes over into your work. It oozes over into how you talk to your family, people that actually might care about you. It oozes over into people that ain't do shit. And then you start <laughs> to feel like, like, where is this energy coming from? And it's because you're walking around with shit that is not helping you. You're walking around with truth that you're not releasing because you want to make everything feel okay. And I feel like what would help people better move through their emotions and process it is having a level of honesty on all aspects. Like I can't be mad at you because you feel a way. Your feelings are your feelings. You can't be mad at me because I feel a way. My feelings are my feelings. But you personally, depending on what the situation is, would be like, well, I don't see how, you know, you could feel like that because these are the things that are on the table. But everybody's different. It's kind of like if you sit there and argue about why somebody feels a way, that's dumb. That's not solution-based. What you feel doesn't matter. What is the solution? How can we help? How can we walk away from this and end this and not carry it on into the next day? And I don't think people today process emotion well because they're still trying to cover up the fact that they're not mad. They're still trying to cover up the fact that they're not bothered. Can't nobody bother me? All this extra shit. There's certain shit that bothers me. And I just feel like for me to protect myself, I should be able to say those things. Uh, okay. uh, you, you look at uh, releasing those emotions as a way of really protecting yourself from that yeah. person or thing that is or just my sanity like I'm sanity. not gonna walk away from today knowing you ain't shit you, <laughs> you feeling like you are shit and me going in tomorrow still feeling like you ain't shit and you walking around here like it's all cool beans no I'm gonna let you know today so I could personally walk in here tomorrow not carrying your bullshit Wait, all right. So, when you when you like give that emotional release to that person that ain't shit, when you do that though, do you are all those emotions like immediately gone, or are you still carrying it? Yeah, you you release that energy, but when, when I, you see that person again, does it not come back? No, uh, because once I release it, it's known. There's nothing that I said is a lie. I laid it on the table, and what I can't control is how you react. What I can't control is what your response is. But me going ahead and allowing myself to honestly tell you what my thoughts are so I don't have to carry that shit. I'm done with it. Like this morning, I cussed Delta Credit Union the fuck out. <laughs> and before I got off the phone, there was a solution and that solution was met. If you ask me now, how do you feel about Delta? Oh, we straight. But if I didn't get the solution that I needed today, tomorrow it would be on 100 instead of being on 10 because you have me waiting for a solution for some shit that was mine in the first place that you couldn't take care of or you couldn't give me a response to. Now I'm waiting and I'm bubbling for this shit. And a lot of stuff be super minor that bubbles into a next day or a one more hour and it just gets enormous when it doesn't have to be. Sometimes that could be people who are like super passive or passive aggressive. You know, you come into a situation mad calm, but you're steadily like throwing gasoline on top of shit when you don't have to. And then you react and then they make you seem like you the crazy person. No, bitch, you came in here with negative energy. Like, you came in here with a plan to uh, initiate some shit, and you knew what buttons to push. And I feel like men, um, 
if you're good at what you said, keeping your emotions to yourself, um, y'all don't get y'all buttons pushed that much. But a woman can be very out with her emotions and a man can easily pick up on, oh, we pushing this today. On Tuesday, I'm gonna push this shit right here. And on Friday, she think we going out, but nah, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna get really fresh and it won't be with her. Like there's certain things you're pushing because you know what this woman's buttons are. And I feel like what helps anybody in, in money, in work, in um, growth, and in relationships is your self-discipline. Like if I know there's a certain type of personality that I can't deal with, I'm not going to try another person because their name is different. No, y'all the same people to me. Like we have to get to a point where we our filter system with people, it gets smaller, it gets better as we grow because you can't keep growing to be better and dealing with the same characters that you know are automatically flawed that you know you just can't, you can't do. You can't tolerate, you don't have the patience for. It. And I feel like that's what keeps people happy in life. You deal with the people that you could deal with. You avoid the people that you cannot tolerate. I think that that's a mature way to go about it. For any, for any Let's look at let's look at your your one of your favorites. Let's look at Joe Budden's woman picking. <laughs> if you look at Joe Budden's woman picking, most of the women that he picked are beautiful, loud, attitude filled, and hella aggressive. So to me, to have better discipline in Joe's life, especially at his age. Sir, you need less stress, not more stress. So the way that you pick your woman has to be better. It has to, like, that filter system has to get better. You can't keep picking the same personalities and women and expecting something different. And women do it too. If you go for the same type of man and that personality don't change, I want I want somebody that's street smart i want somebody that you know get his money how he get his money but i want him to respect me none of those things come with respecting women because he always has more options there's always more women in the street that look just like you so it's, it's, it, i think it's about filtering your people i don't think people today filter their people well and that's why they can't process their emotions in the correct way i don't know how you feel about that i mean like <laughs> the button part like look a lot of people have a problem with their preference and not upgrading what your preference is as yeah. you go on with life you learn more in life you realize you know that stuff i thought was cool when i was 25 i need to update that i actually don't need to be with somebody with a certain characteristic and to your point he may be a, at least with the public relationships he's had he hasn't upgraded that preference too well right. um now if his preference was somebody that he could be with, that he can make money with in a public space, then actually he did he did pretty well because he kept finding individuals who could live that social life type of life. So I don't know his rationale for being attracted from a relationship standpoint to certain women. It could have been a business move. I'm not trying to give him that much credit for that because I don't know. Um, but... I, w I would say, like, one of the things you touched on was interesting. When, when we talk about emotional intelligence, see, when you, with your example with Delta, when you called him, right, you got the solution, the type of result you wanted. The problem with it for me is if I don't get the result I want, but I've already let those emotions out, every time that same person or business or whatever comes back into my life, I'm instantly angry again. And now that I've expressed it, it's on, it's on my shoulder. <laughs> like I can't even suppress it anymore because if I tell somebody something about them that I really don't like they make no adjustment and now I see them again even though I let it out the first time oh, it's still there I want to say it again because you made yeah. no adjustment so but if I never let it be known I have the ability to just move through mentally like you know what I'm just gonna stay focused but if I let them know and then I'm so I let say I let you know I got a problem with you you make no adjustment about said problem, but I'm in a space with you again. 
now I'm in this weird space where I'm like, do I address it again? Or do I say nothing? If I say nothing, they feel like they got some kind of power over me now because they know I'm upset to be here. Now I'm being quiet. Like it's that mentality that yeah. makes it too difficult because if I give you an emotional release and I don't get the desired result, I have now lost some power. Remember, it's all about power to me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, and it, it has to be a benefit. So if me giving you my emotions doesn't benefit me the right way, I just lost some power when I didn't have to do it. So um, that's something that I, I, I do analyze in those spaces. Um, the other part you touched on with preferences, listen, that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> but I do agree that <laughs> your preference has to be an emotional alignment with you you have to do whatever it is through your conversations to realize this is the type of person that's going to have my best emotional interests at heart or my emotional interests at heart um and i don't think a lot of people do that but look if we're talking about preferences i think most people (laughs) screw that up (laughs) they start complaining about the opposite sex and not knowing that you know the common denominator why you keep messing up is who you go after so that's that's a whole different can of words Okay, so let's say in that sense, how do you go from meeting a a woman to seeing how she interacts with you and what her emotional intelligence is to be like, okay, I can continue this. Or what is it in the past that may have been like, "Mm -mm, this one seems a little bit ticky ticky. Like, have you ever noticed how they handle certain emotions as like, nah. Well, it's interesting, right? Because I don't want to give off the impression that I got it so together that I'm able to just look at you and say, your emotions are trash. <laughs> you know, but, nobody has it together. <laughs> yeah. But I would say, um, and on like some initial first dates, what allows me to know it could be a problem is how you deal with your own issues out loud to me. Mm-hmm. Like if you're unable to suppress certain private information that I haven't earned the right to know about, mm-hmm. then now I know that you're going to be the type of person that does an emotional dump. Let me tell you something. If there's one thing I cannot take. Psst. We will be back. After these goddamn messages. Fall is coming. Fall is like my favorite time of the year. Autumn is my favorite season. So if you're looking for some merch, check your girl. Support the She Gets It podcast by getting you some merch. You know what I'm saying? You get some merch. You support. You get a little something, something out of it. You become a representative of affiliate for She Gets It podcast. And I have sweatshirts on there, hoodies, t-shirts, whatever you need is on the She Gets It shop. Shop with Teespring. I'll go ahead and put the link up. Let's get back to the show. Now back to the show. We're continuing to talk about these guts and emotions and how you can check them. With Sean and Shan. And those certain emotions that's like, nah. Well, it's interesting, right? Because I don't want to give off the impression that I got it so together that I'm able to just look at you and say, your emotions are trash. <laughs> you know, but Nobody I, has it together. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would say um, on, on like some initial first dates, what allows me to know it could be a problem is how you deal with your own issues out loud to me. Mm-hmm. Like if you're unable to suppress certain private information that I haven't earned the right to know about, mm-hmm. then now I know that you're going to be the type of person that does an emotional dump. Let me tell you something. If it's one thing I cannot take, yeah. it's a person that wants to do an emotional dump. My spirit don't be ready. I'm never ready for it. You could tell me, yo, I'm going to call you at 9 p.m. I just need to vent to somebody about something. 9 p.m. comes. I am not ready. I am not ready. I don't know how to respond. I don't know how to take it. It's too much negativity yeah. for me. Um, I try to stay in, in positive spaces. So people with an emotional dump I'm, I'm not the guy for you so like if you're talking about your ex or you're complaining about your job and my my mentality on a date is for us to see if we are compatible if we have chemistry to be our natural selves and so if I'm thinking your natural self is to complain 
about all this emotional stuff you're dealing with, this emotional content, I'm like, yo, where is the exit <laughs> from whatever venue we at? This yeah. may not work. And, and God knows if you're if we're having these conversations on the phone and it's not about us getting to know each other, it's about you telling me about issues and emotional issues you're mm-hmm. going through. I, I get the fact that people want to let you know, hey, these are some of my past experiences in relationships. So I want to let you know this up front. I'm not knocking those people, but I do think there is a time, a place, and a certain conversation for that. And that conversation for that is not every conversation. Yeah. <laughs> like, give me some time to be like, yo, I know who you are. We vibing. I just, and the emotional dump process is something I can't deal with. But once again, to answer your specific question, I notice it based on how initially you tell me about negative things in your personal life from an emotional standpoint. It could be something negative, but if you're explaining it to me from an emotional place, I know there's somebody that processes their emotions to those around them, and I'm probably not the best fit for you. <laughs> I um, sometimes feel like the people who purposely ask you, like, what's going on like what's new and you give them like a surface answer a surface answer could be like something very one wordish, and you don't go into details and then you meet them and they're not they don't know how to bring a topic in their bag or their pocket they don't know how to initiate a discussion about anything else so they make the discussion about you and maybe that person happens to be a person that's not closed off that'll go ahead and talk willingly about what's really going on. Sometimes I feel like people who look like they're asking about you or about your day or trying to be polite every time in a conversation are the most suppressive people (laughs) because they're setting up the discussion to never ever have to talk about themselves. They're setting up the discussion to never ever have to be questioned because a question was never turned to me. I took control of the conversation and I made it about what you got going on. And I've been in a relationship that's kind of like that. And what that does is it sucks all the good energy from you to where you catch yourself like, damn. Every time I talk about this person, they want to know about what's not working. Um, they don't ask me like, "What's it was like? What's good that happening today?" Or, or what's something opposite of negative energy that's happening today? And then they start to flip it, be like, "Man, you always um, got something going on, or you're complaining about something." I'm not complaining about you, but the, you asked me what's wrong. You never you know, willingly talk about your day and that that makes me willingly to talk about whatever I got going on, that's actually good. But you're always steering the discussion to somewhere negative. So then it started to feel like, damn, like I have no good energy with this person. When I'm not talking to this person, when this person is not around, I'm at my happiest peak. And that's because if you focus, I feel like if you focus on something negative, that's what you're going to get. If you focus on what's the light of the situation, it's just going to be better. Your emotions are going to be better. When you see a person, they'll be like, oh, that's good energy. Let me go hit them up. Let me go talk to them. It's never going to be like, damn, they're going to make me remember that this is fucked up. (laughs) And so just like you said, like you try to maintain yourself to be around positive energy. And a lot of people can't do that. So for me, when I, when I, take the step out of we're cool to let's see if we work dating let's see if we work in a relationship I need to see that person at every emotion I need to see that person when they're angry first when they're sad when they're happy um, when things are like lined up good in their life to see if I can handle it because sometimes I think today, because people move hella fast, you meet somebody, y'all might be fucking, y'all might be going out, they come to your house sometimes, y'all chill, and then they have like one bad day, and you sitting there looking like, 
Who is this? <laughs> Who the fuck is this? And yeah. you don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where that is happening. So I think it's smart to see the person that you think is going to be your person through all their emotions first before you be like, you know what? Let me dive into this shit right here because it just seems like it's good. And, you know, I think if you do that, people will make less mistakes. Okay. No, yeah, look, I agree with everything you're saying there. Um, you have to have somebody that knows how to process their emotions. Um, and, and what you're also talking about, it, it sounds like somebody that, and there's a lot of people like this, they lack communication skills <laughs> to really, and, and as a guy, I know because we're the ones that typically pursue women in society, mm-hmm. a lot of us got some trash openers or, or conversations but you're good at breakers. talking to people you're good at talking no, to people. I, say, I said some of us okay. <laughs> and that's not that i'm doing my own horn but i'm i'm saying like you have a lot of people that have those dry intros because it's a norm so mm-hmm. i see the reason i don't do a lot of that like um it's because i don't want to i don't want to say something to somebody else that i wouldn't want them to say to me because it's dry or boring i don't want to have boring conversation at all so i'm not going to start with a boring opener i don't want to see you be like how you doing even if i ask that question i can't help but to say what's happening what's popping in your world what's what's, what's good with you i always say something with more of a flair to let you know what kind of energy i'm coming with i can't just say hey I just can't do that, right? Um, but once again, um, the other portion you were, were talking on was, <laughs> you reminded me like when you were talking about it, you remember the Care Bears? Yes, my favorite show. Oh, no, don't do me like, oh, I thought, <laughs> okay. You know how it was let like, me do it. Wasn't it like everybody had a different emotion? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, bellies. Put the Listen, I don't remember, look, I just remember it was a lot of them that had their own different emotion, right? Yeah. And what you and I just thought about when you said it because it's like I want, even though I'm the type of person I don't want to have all these emotional conversations, I do want to know what it looks like when you're dealing with the anger yeah. or the whatever. It's it's a different emotion. I need to know if I can deal with you when mm-hmm. you're going through that, or not even so much can I deal with you, but just knowing what to, I should be doing. What yes, what, what can I do to help space? you when you're angry? Or even like your friends. If you've never seen your friend mad and they get angry and they don't hear you, you can't talk to them. It's kind of like, nigga, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I've been telling you to calm down and you just in here fucking up shit. And I don't want to get arrested with you because we friends. Like, I need to know what is my position when you're in this mindset. Look, you, you bring a, a hit real quick. Um, this is something that people, please people, if you have somewhat of a new friend and y'all decide y'all want to be drinking partners, right? Yeah, yeah, please drink with them at a, like a kickback first. Do not go in public with somebody you've never yes. drank with before because you don't know what they finna put you in. Are they a <laughs> like, fighting drunk? The Yo, leave them fighting drunk are the words. I'm not here for altercation. I'm too old for this. I'm not tussling. I'm not dodging bullets. Like, no, nah, we're not we're not doing none of this. So please know your friend's emotional level. Is, is she gonna try to take everybody's man up in here when she drunk? Like, what is it? Yo, you gotta know, you gotta like know your friends. We're, we're talking about obviously relationships mostly, but friendship is a different type of relationship. So you gotta yeah. know, yo, are you the kind of person? Are, are you a drinking partner or are you a smoking partner? We gotta know what level is right for you because you, you might be- Even when smoking. When if we smoke, are you going to start panicking because you're forgetting to exhale or inhale? Like, let me know. I need you to know this up front. Well, I, the only thing I would say about smoking partners is most people that want to be a smoking partner with you, they're not, especially at this age, they're not new to it, right? So they can, you know, they can handle that. Those drinking people, you never, they drink a little too much. It, it's never the same, theoretically, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they on that dark liquor, oh my God, you don't, you never know. Um, but I hear what you're saying with, with, with smoking partners as well. Um, just any of that, just make sure you do it in a safe space first time so you kind of know who you're dealing with. God knows you don't want to have an emotional partner. I'm over here talking about the aggression, but you got you got an emotional drop with you like, uh. You know, sometimes I know personally that when I'm on my my treats, my adult treats, I have to be at home. 
I have to be at home. I have to be by myself because I get very touchy, touchy, very feely, feely. I could never do that in public. I could never do that around people I barely know because it's going to come off like I'm wanting something else. So it's about knowing yourself and that's your responsibility separately, individually, not somebody babysitting you, not somebody, oh, I got to take care of this bitch tonight because you already know how she gets. She want to have a good time. Your good time shouldn't be ruining anybody else's good time. And yeah, yo, you got to say that again. Like one more time, your good time, what? Should not oh. be ruining anybody else's good time, okay? It happens so often. Like, I'm, I'm that kind of friend, by the way. I'm the type of friend that I can't have a good time. Like, if, you come, if you're with me, like, if you come with me, I have to see you having a good time or I can't have a good time, which yeah. sucks so bad because I might be in my element. But if the people that are supposed to be with me, I feel like I'm responsible for your happiness or your your entertainment in mm-hmm. some way. So if you, you got to be over there smiling and looking like you're happy to be there. If I not, feel- I can't. I feel that pressure when I invite different friends that don't know each other to one thing. Like, how can I make sure all of y'all are that are so different, but you, my people, are having a good time? Because they all want a certain piece of you that you can't give them 100% because you're like the host. You're like the person that invited yeah. everybody here. And that's that's a lot of pressure and you feel like you're at work and everybody's at play. I don't like that. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, so I used to throw kickbacks a lot and I used to go to mixers a lot. So what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I had to get accustomed to that because you have to have the right mix of people. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much you have to have the right, everybody doesn't have to be the right mix, but you got to make sure you keep a couple friends and this that you know are good socially on their own i'm actually one of those people so like when i say go to mixers like i might know the host they want me to come because they know hey we got some people that's coming solo sean can keep them entertained or or keep a conversation going or when i'm doing a kickback yeah the people that are coming knows me they know the other co-hosts but i need a few of them people that i'm inviting to be good on their own because if I gotta keep leaving to go let people in at the gate or something, or, or the I worst. Have, yeah, I can't have when they're looking all lonely until I come back. But if you got friends in your friend circle that you know, we were talking about communication skills earlier. I keep a few people around me that I'm like, okay, you good with communication skills? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's like, especially um, as a as a guy, I got a lot of homies like that. But look, if I'm throwing a kickback and I'm inviting different women. Um, who only really know me, that becomes an issue again, right? Because if it's a few of y'all and y'all only know me, if I'm not around, are you kind of like, yo, I feel left out? How are you processing that? I don't, and guess what I don't want to have later? An emotional conversation about me leaving you alone for, you know, a time. <laughs> so it can not be an emotional, emotional conversation. Listen, all of them are emotional conversations. Hey, um, let's talk about I just want to talk about um the other night like I felt like you were really paying me much attention that's the worst to be (laughs) to bring somebody somewhere and they feel like you gotta hold their hand all through an event like no I gotta be able to let you go check in with you come back and then I can chill with you towards the end of the night and I just feel like there are certain moments where you need to know, can this person maturely process their emotions, okay? Um, when people can't get what they want, how do they act? Like, I feel like you need to know that about yourself. You need to know that about the person you're dealing with. Um, when people feel overwhelmed, can you communicate that you feel overwhelmed and not? fucking spaz out on on people um when you're being criticized i feel like a lot of people don't deal well with criticism um after an argument do you get super petty because there's a disagreement or do you come to a let's agree to disagree or let's come to this is why i did this this is why you did that okay Next time, this is what I need. Next time, this is what you need. I feel like that's the mature route. But sometimes people get super petty 
after a disagreement because they feel like they're not getting their way at the end of something. Yeah. yeah. Once again, yeah. that goes back to like that. <laughs> um, when you release those emotions, if you don't get a result you're looking for, yeah. did you really just release them emotions? Because now if I didn't get a result, I still got them same emotions. <laughs> but now yeah. you just know how I feel about it. <laughs> so now you can be petty because you know I'm taking this rock. I'm yeah. dealing with it. But I, I mean, I know personally I've gotten to the point though where and I'm happy about this. Like I, I really control my pride so much anyway mm-hmm. um, that say I do release some emotions, the result of you accepting the emotions don't really affect me as much these days. Not the P cool word, the pride. Today. A lot of men don't know how to yeah, control pride, that. Pride, ego. Listen, <laughs> ego is ego is the, the like it brings so many people down unnecessarily. Because mm-hmm. I, what I always, a lot of people have these high egos when they don't really have a reason to have one. Mm-hmm. But we all got this dignity about ourselves. Like, like if you're not in a position in life that you feel like you should be in or that you know you should be in, why is your ego so high? It's okay to humble yourself down. Uh, and that's where I'm at. I'm always striving, so I don't necessarily have this high ego. I have a high ambition, but not a high ego. Mm-hmm. So my pride isn't on the line with every conversation. That's why I can say. I'm okay being wrong and not right. Like, yeah. I, I, it's easy for me to look at somebody and say, you know what, you're right. I don't have to win in a disagreement or a debate. I just want to leave that debate with better knowledge than I came into it with. If I'm debating somebody and I realize real quickly they don't know what they're talking about, it's not benefiting me, I would say you got it just because I don't want to waste time. Like, mm-hmm. I'm wasting my, I'm not going to, if I'm not gaining anything, there's no value to be brought in this. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. My ego isn't too high. My pride isn't on the line. I could care less how you're going to feel about me. Unless you like, I don't know, my boss or something in my promotion on the line, then you yeah. <laughs> listen. But outside of that, just a regular person, I don't care. Like, yeah. unless it's about to go viral, I don't care how. Do it for the brand. Hey, look, if, if we doing it for something like that, then I got to make some button up and I represent myself well because yeah. I don't know where this is coming from. But just in a one-off situation, I don't care what you think. I don't care how loud your voice just got. We, you know how loud people get. They don't want to. Man, that like- tone, that tone <laughs> means multiple things. Hey, hey, listen, my tone don't never get too loud. So I'm no, your tone <laughs> is is how it is. Period. But some people's tone will completely flip a discussion. Certain. That's why certain things cannot be text. I need you to call me so I can see where your energy is. <laughs> certain <laughs> times, when, sound like. <laughs> like I'm gonna read this in a certain way where it's probably not how you meant it. So it's just important to to communicate on the person's level of communication because sometimes you talk to people and it's kind of like talking to brick. <laughs> hey, well, look, if it's what they are, I've learned tonight. I, I don't know your your dating space that ain't uh that's not on the discussion. Still non-existent, tonight. Sean. <laughs> Still non-existent. <laughs> but what I do know is you need to just if you need to bail out if that communicate and when you see them yeah. for communication skills, stop wasting your time because you're never gonna be fully fulfilled. I'm I ain't talking about sexual fulfillment here. We're talking yeah. about emotional fulfillment. And that comes from the ability to communicate with your partner. Like you can have the best sex ever, and it's cool, but you ain't gonna wanna. If I don't wanna I, talk, about it, I believe there's no way for you to have the best sex ever, and your communication is trash. Yeah. I, look, I I think that's I possible. So great. <laughs> I ain't never, never, no way. <laughs> You like, yo, I don't like how you communicate when I met you. I already know it's trash. I'm out. <laughs> I don't like this first conversation. Listen, I, yo, look, I, I I don't know. I haven't done any studies on it. <laughs> I know I don't want to stick around for, uh, well, it's not even that I don't want to stick around. It's just that I don't want to be stuck in a space where you begin to think we should be talking on the phone a lot when you <laughs> when I don't like talking to you at all. <laughs> and we just like doing one thing. So I don't want to, I, I think when you're in those spaces, confusion can come into the equation because you think we can start talking about stuff. We don't need to talk about it. We here for, we, we got one job to give. 
<laughs> outside of that, I don't want to hear nothing else because you be killing the moment every time you start these boring conversations. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so, but if you got good conversation and then it's just good sexual chemistry, you got the makings of a potential relationship that could sustain itself. So. Yeah. So, um, for your last tips to anyone out there on processing emotions, what is major key? Like, what is the one thing you need to focus on? Um, what's in it for you? Mm. Like, literally. Like what's in, and, th- and obviously that's a tip in life, consequences, mm-hmm. um, analyzing, whatever. But my thing is, my philosophy on this is, what do you stand to gain? Mm. Like, what is the value in me telling you how I feel about this? Yeah. And, and if there's no value in it, why are you telling them? Like, time is a precious commodity. We can't get time back. When you take all this time in life to waste it on somebody who doesn't care about your emotions, you can't get that time back. Find somebody who Talk does. About it. Like, so, so when I say a benefits analysis, is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to tell you how I feel about something? Is it worth it for me to think through how I feel to give it to you for you to do nothing with it? Mm-hmm. So my, my thing is, what's in it for me? When you come to um tell, having an emotional conversation, what's in it for you? Be selfish with that. There's nothing in it for me. Look to avoid it or remove yourself from it. Yeah. I personally choose not to sleep with my emotions because it don't hit my spots right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel that. Listen, it, look, it's different. Listen, if if you can't sleep on some emotional issue, then that's the, what's in it for you, right? You know right. you can't get no good sleep. So that's the same principle, though. It just said different, right? Like what's in it for you is I gotta get this off my chest. So I get it. Some people have, but make sure you're looking at what's the real value. Is that what you think is a value, mm-hmm. or is there just, or if hey, if you get rid of that person. You ain't got to worry about telling them how you feel. You're going to sleep like a baby when they got your phone. Listen, when I love dismissing people. I love dismissing people. <laughs> you are dismissed. <Exactly. laughs> and now that's a good emotional dump. Get him out of here. Now yeah. I'm like my, my ego good. You hit that block button. Your ego like, hey. Listen, what's up? I, I love a block, block button. button. <laughs> my number's yeah. up with my credit score. It's up. <laughs> we up. There you go.